Howdy everyone, I'm Biscuit, and today I want to talk about vectors, how to work with them, how to add them to each other, and most importantly, why you should care about any of this. So this is going to be a bit more of a deep dive into the underlying mathematics compared to what we've been doing, but as my intro physics teacher taught me, you don't understand physics unless you understand both the underlying math and the concepts. And I truly believe that anyone can understand this stuff with a bit of teaching and practice. Okay, recall that a vector is something to describe something with both a magnitude and most importantly, a direction. Insert despicable me reference. Okay, then why the heck should we care about vectors? Well, it turns out you can use them to describe physical quantities like position, velocity, acceleration, in a really natural way. We happen to live in a world with effectively three dimensions. Okay, I'm ignoring string theory or general relativity or anything crazy, so don't at me. So this means we can describe any motion as a combination of three directions or coordinates. So, okay, now imagine you're kicking a soccer ball. After you kick it, you can describe how it's moving using a combination of forward, up, and then left and right. So we can describe the motion using a mathematical object that contains all three of these bits of information, which we call a vector. And each of these bits of information we call a component of that vector. Okay. So I, I don't want to get too abstract too quickly, so let's start looking at examples of writing down vectors and work with them. Okay, so let's look at ways vectors are often written down in their component form. Here we can see we have an example vector uh, in picture form first. We can see that the vector has a total length of 5. It has a component in the x direction of 4, component in the y direction of 3. So now let's say this vector is describing the velocity, okay, such as speed with the direction of a soccer ball that just got kicked, and the units are like meters per second. Okay, which should actually be pretty freaking fast. Okay, so we can write this vector in a component form by either writing the components in terms of unit vectors or in a vector form. So let's look at an example of that. Okay, so here we have the same vector in our picture uh, written out, the vector V indicated by an arrow. Here we have it written in the unit vector form and a matrix form. So we have these two unit vectors, i and j, where a unit vector is simply a vector that points in either one of the coordinate directions, say x or y. So for i would be x, j would be pointing in the y direction, but the unit vector just has a length of one. And so effectively all we need to care about is that with the numbers in front of it. So those are gonna tell us the components and when we wanna add vectors to each other, that's what we're gonna be interested in looking at. Here we have the matrix form, typically written the x component first, then the y component, and if you have more components going down, say in a z direction or some other direction, you continually write them down. Just another way of representing the same bits of information. Okay, so let's take a quick diversion for a moment. Sometimes we need to actually convert a vector into component form. So say we know its magnitude and some angle compared to some axis, and we can convert it into component form by writing it out as a right triangle and using standard geometry Sokotoa techniques. So let's look at that. Okay, so let's practice breaking a vector down into its component form. So here we have a vector with length 10, and it's pointing north of the x-axis by 30 degrees. And so we can see that if we draw a right triangle, this magnitude of 10 is our hypotenuse, and we're given one angle of this right triangle. So recall back in geometry, maybe we've learned it somewhere else earlier or later, but we've probably learned at some point the rules of Sokotoa. So if we have an angle of a triangle, we can relate that to two of its side lengths. So we here we have the opposite side to the angle, so opposite, and the side length that is adjacent, so next to the angle. And so Sokotoa tells us that the sine of this angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, and the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So why is this helpful? So what we're looking for is the components so in this case, that would be the opposite side and the adjacent side. So if we had those side lengths, then we're done. Those are the components to the vector. So if we take and solve for this opposite and adjacent side, we can actually directly get the answer we're looking for. So if we do this, we multiply the hypotenuse to the other side, we get that the opposite length is always gonna be the hypotenuse times the sinus angle, or for the adjacent the hypotenuse times the cosinus angle. So in this case, our hypotenuse was 10, so we look at our triangle, our hypotenuse was 10, and our angle was 30. We plug this in, and we get our answers directly. So this is something that's very general, and we often may need to do this when in the beginning of a problem, but just know that there's something you may need to do. Okay, so let's back up one more step. Why should we care about the component form of vectors? Okay, well, mathematically speaking, this is really the only way to write out and work with vectors. 
aside from just messing around with pictures. And we like to work with vectors on paper because that will allow us to do some really powerful things with this math and solve these physics problems. Okay, so let's do another example. Let's say we have another person kick the ball. So go back to our original example and give an additional five meters per second in the X direction. Okay, so if this isn't the most interesting example, think about cars crashing or meters flying to each other, something crazy. Okay, and we would be naturally interested in how the ball moves now after the second kick, which means we'll need to combine these two kicks or essentially these, add these two vectors together. So this ends up being completely natural in a component form because all we need to do is add the like components together. So the X components, the X components, and the Y components, the Y components. Okay, so another way to think about this, we don't know how to add strange mathematical objects like vectors together, but we do know how to add numbers together. So our goal is to change a vector into a bunch of numbers and therefore we can just easily add them together. So let's go do that. Okay, so here we have our original vector V1 we originally described plus an additional vector v2, and we would like to know what happens when we add them together, or essentially add the kicks together. So let's go look at that and write that out. Okay, here we have our two vectors, v1 and v2, we write them out and say, let's do the matrix form this time. If you want to do the vector form, feel free to do that, it's okay. But if we have it written out in this matrix form, all we need to do is add the like terms together, so we have to add the 4 to the 5, and the three to the zero to get our resultant vector. So let's see what happens when we do that. So adding four to five, we get nine, and adding three to zero, we also get three. So our final vector has an X component of nine and a Y component of three. Okay, so let's draw this final added vector into our original picture. So it has an X component of nine, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it, the end would be there and it has a y component of 3, so 1, 2, 3, this y component would be here. So we can see that this vector is going to end up right at the end of the tip of the triple one. So here we have v1 plus v2, and this would be the velocity of the ball immediately after the two kicks. It may change over time with gravity pulling down, but this is how it's moving immediately after the two kicks. Okay, let's add one more additional question on to that. So we may be interested in how fast the ball is moving now. Now we have the vector, so let's convert that back into a number, a total magnitude, which would essentially in this problem be a speed. So we're changing the velocity into a speed. And the way we do that is going to be the Pythagorean theorem. So if we're interested in that, all we need to do is take our two components, so that would be 9 and 3, take this, square them both, and add them to each other, and then we have our answer. Simply put this in your calculator and write it out. So here, 9 squared is 81, plus 3 squared is 9. So this would be the square root of 90. So that would be roughly 9.5. But, you know, you can always put more exactly, put in your calculator, put in something like Wolfram Alpha. You get it? One more thing we might be interested in as well is an angle regards to the x-axis. So say I was interested in this angle here. Let's call that angle phi. One way that you can get that is going back and noting that, okay, I really do have a right triangle in the end. I have the two components, this one being nine, this one being three of this triangle. And I can go back and get the angle using sine or cosine or tangent. Typically people use tangent in this case. It really works no matter what you use. So if you're interested, if I want to get the tan of this angle, it would be, in this case, the y component divided by the x component. So three over nine. So how do you get this angle? Well, you take the inverse tangent. So if you take the inverse tangent both sides, we get phi equals inverse tangent, or arc tangent, sometimes as it's called, of three over nine. And this is a function that's in calculators or in Wolfram Alpha or whatever you're working with. And just make sure that you're in degrees mode if you're looking for degrees or in radians, uh, if you're looking for radians in the end. Just something always to be careful about. At the end of the day, adding vectors is such a common occurrence in physics, whether it be in classical mechanics with velocity, force, or momentum, or later adding electric magnetic fields. So breaking vectors into components is how we're able to do this. This is how we're able to add them together. We may be tempted to gloss over the underlying mathematics, but being able to do these sort of things is crucial to practically solving problems and understanding how our world works. Thanks everyone for watching. I really appreciate it and hope you get something insightful out of this. Okay, thanks, bye. Okay, so, he so here we have an example. Okay. 
So here let's pr start pra go Okay, so here let's practice breaking a go Okay, here let's practice Okay, here let's Okay, so let's <laughs> Why can I talk? 